Yes. What do we have in any of our encounters with medical technology that's been sequestered? You asked the question, what do we have that, that has come about through some of these research projects and encounters that are medically related? A lot. Uh, my understanding is that um, if the technologies that deal with uh, regenerative capabilities um, exist, transdimensional, that are sequestered, where you could actually regenerate spinal column or a severed limb and nerves, uh, things of this sort, um, cancer, uh, other diseases. But the problem is those use technologies that are transdimensional. What do I mean by that? They use subtle energy technologies that aren't just kind of like acupuncture, but I mean that are you know, electromagnetic systems that are very, very high tech. Almost like in, in Star Trek where they wave a thing, you know, have, but that would actually work um, reliably. But there too, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in pharmaceutical and conventional medical. The, there's agribusiness, medibusiness, military industrial complex. A lot of toes would be stepped on, but also more importantly than that, is that if you open a, a window into an application that's medical related to these technologies, people are gonna see the energy implications of it. And with that, it's good by oil. It's good by coal. So they've been sequestered for the same reason the energy and propulsion technology. But yes, I understand from men and women I've worked with that there are amazing technologies that relate to medical systems and curative, um, <coughs> and reparative, regenerative technologies that are trans-dimensional electronic systems that would just blow your mind. Yeah, and, and so unfortunately, you know, in a sense, our medical system is sort of Stone Age from that point of view. But there is medical information that can help. Yes, there's medical information that can help. And one of the things I've said, there are multiple, look at this whole issue of disclosure. First, there's the basic information, we're not alone in the universe. Then there's the, the fundamental technology, energy, propulsion. And then there are all the ancillary or associated technologies. You know, medical, uh, environmental abatement. Uh, Ken Shoulders, who was a, a scientist, discovered uh, charged clusters that would, under right conditions, neutralize radioactive material. So you could take all the radioactive waste in the world and neutralize it. This was proven. And the Department of Energy was going to fund the next level of it, and the people in this cabal circled their limousines and said, no, you will not, because it was pulling energy from this quantum vacuum zero point to do it. I know the people who are part of that initiative, all of them. So there are so many spinoffs and benefits of disclosure of this central issue, but that's the reason it's secret is that the implications are so huge. It's not just the energy sector or the transportation sector. It's the medical, it's the pharmaceutical, it's all of it. But you know, would 99.999% of humanity benefit if it was used peacefully? Now there's a big caveat, if it was used peacefully, yes. The bigger question becomes, as a colonel who was in charge of future technologies for the Air Force, and I discussed here in DC not long ago, what if they're weaponized? I said, well, they already have been, haven't they? Yeah. But they're covertly weaponized. But what if they proliferate and are weaponized? So this gets into sort of the larger question, <laughs> evolutionary question of, are we willing to go forward as a peaceful civilization or not? Because we are at a crossroads where if we don't go forward peacefully, we won't go forward at all. And it's not world peace, it's universal peace. It's interplanetary. So one path leads to, it's like the Hopi line or the Hopi prophecy rock. One line leads to termination and the other one leads forever out into the future, into the stars. We are the last generation to make that decision. We don't have another hundred years. So um, that's why this is so critical. It's why I left my medical career to work on this because I came to realize, once I realized what was behind the secrecy, why it's so secret, that it really doesn't matter. I mean, yes, I can save one life at a time in the ER, or maybe three or four, when I'm really busy, but 
I used to have to run multiple code blues. <laughs> code blues when your heart stops. Um, but now we have the responsibility of the earth and all of her children for the next thousands of years in the, in, in the balance, hanging in the balance. So humans have been trying to make this transition for a very, very long time, and it keeps getting thwarted by, let's say, call special interests, people who are hell-bent on maintaining the status quo of the financial system, the political system, whatever it is. Um, but there has to be, a, a, let's say, a nonviolent revolution of, uh, that, that has to take place. I'm not a violent person, but I don't think you let these uh, uh, the sociopaths who have another agenda to be, continue to call the shots, as they have for the last hundred years. We have to have the good people step forward. Most people, though, who are nice are too nice. And one thing that I found very early on in 1992 when the head of Army Intelligence threatened me, I said, basically, screw you and the horse you rode in on. You get in my way, you'll be in Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary for the rest of your life because I've got witnesses and documents that involve you in covert illegal projects back when you were a young officer. And he went, oh. I said, you want to get on the dance floor? Come on. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff that ha So, but that's, you know, you, I mean, so that's ugly, perhaps, but, you know, you're not going to threaten me and get away with it. Um, but I think that most people, here's one of the problems, is that people are either too nice or they don't have the courage. Like so many of the technologies that I know are held by, by people who, are out there that we've met with who could bring out these technologies, the first time someone comes up to them and goes, boo, they put their tail between their legs and they run. They're not willing to take the risk. Now, you have to be willing to take the risk, including losing your life, or you can't go anywhere with something like this. Or if they know they can put you on the run with the least little threat, of defaming you or threatening you or what have you, they know they've got you because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so the currency that, in, that on, the only currency that matters, you have to know about this, you have to have the vision of what to do, there has to be a certain fund of knowledge and intellect is why I'm sharing, but when push comes to shove, how much heart courage do you have? Um, and that's true of these medical technologies, it's true of the basic energy technologies, um, and uh, it's true of the state of the world. Uh, so we have to find our hearts. We have to find our ability to come together so that the good people of the earth prevail over these uh, sociopathic folks who have a eschatological agenda, who, who, who love, you know, sort of endless war and have the sort of the crescendo happen with uh, some sort of... Uh, bizarre, you know, Armageddon type thing. Uh, now, of course, if they keep fooling around, they may get their wishes because the earth isn't going to be able to endure seven billion people living like we do indefinitely. I mean, we're, you know, we have both polar ice caps melting and the equilibrium of the earth is becoming, including the magnetic field, increasingly unstable. So this instability is going to increase and not decrease if we stay on the path we're on. It's like the old saying, unless we change directions, we're likely to end up where we're going.